Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Junkyard Digs. Today I'm here with my buddy Wyatt, who is a diesel surveys technician, and we're gonna take another stab at getting this 7.3 liter running. Ready for this? Sure. So a lot of you guys enjoyed part one and two. This is part three. We've read your comments up until this point, and a lot of them have been helpful in me coming up with some ideas. So my ultimate plan is to have Wyatt just step in and do everything. Wyatt, what is your plan going forward? You've seen the video and the cringe that was in part two with four cans of ether or whatever it was. So I'm going to say your buddy zip ties and bias plies up there in the Canadian land would be envious of the amount of ether you've pumped into this thing. <laughs> I know my little heart broke watching it. The amount of blow by that's coming out of the blow by tube or the road draft tube, whatever you guys want to call it. I like blow by tube. That's pretty much the only use it had that day. <laughs> She'll run. She'll be fine. But uh, yeah, the amount of gas that's coming out of there has got me a little bit of concern. These are a high compression engine. They rely on the compression to ignite the fuel. Watching the videos the other day, it looked like you're running into two issues, fueling possibly even heat slash compression from either your glow plug system or the atrocious amounts of blow by. There was a lot of blow by and I didn't realize it until afterwards. Had this been a gas, I would have been like, oh, all the gases are slipping past the rings and there's no compression. I don't know why it never dawned on me that day. I'm like, wow, that's a lot of smoke coming out of the bottom of the motor. That's weird. Wonder where that's coming from. Definitely not from around the rings, Kevin, you idiot. All the ether we put in there dries motors out pretty bad. There's probably about no oil left in those rings, and it's just all our compression is going zing and out. So, so yeah. Oops. I'm going to start in by uh, taking all the glow plugs out, checking them over, probably bench testing them. I brought some spares up that I had just in case they are bad. We're going to dump some oil down the cylinders, hopefully save what little compression there could be left in this bad girl, and uh, have her going. In the meantime, I'm going to try to set up a better fuel system. We're going to get that filter back in play. I'm either going to feed it electrically from the front with my pump or try to get that mechanical going so we know we have the right amount of pressure. I think one of our problems as well was every time I shut that pump off between tries, it was basically losing our prime. So that has a Schrader valve that I can just reprime it every time and know that it has fuel. So those are our steps moving forward. Let's begin. Uh, IDIs are known for having an issue with aftermarket glow plugs and being this truck's 26-ish years old, it's highly possible someone has went in and changed glow plugs at some point. Now, if they were a kind individual and put quality glow plugs in, I'm probably not going to have a problem. But if they went and bought the cheapest stuff they could have or physically bought, it's going to be a rough day. The glow plug you've got Obviously your body, your heating element, and your terminal where everything connects. This heating element on the cheaper units balloons in the bore, and when that balloons in the bore they tend to stick, and when they stick they break off, and if they break off, either a head has to come off, or you really hate your life and pull the head off. And actually that's really the only thing you can do. Or you tell your buddy Kevin, hey, you've got a really nice diesel here. My mom called and I need to go home. <laughs> a big thing on these trucks, the reason they require glow plugs, even in 90 degree temperatures, is there's a pre-cup that sits just above the chamber on these because they're not like a traditional engine that have got piston, combustion chamber. They are piston, cylinder head, and then there's a hole drilled in the cylinder head where a combustion cup is pressed in and a little hole sits but you'll put the tip of your glow plug in and you'll have your injector shooting right beside that heated element on startup to help heat that air. Science. Science. What are these like, did you say 25 to one compression? Yeah, from the factor of like low to mid 20s, I, I think the spec was 25 to one. I could be wrong, it could be like 23. I didn't look it up. Yours, three. Three. Three to one. Three compressees. As I'm starting in on this bad girl, I can already tell we have some good times starting here. So what I'm doing here is this first glow plug, as mentioned before, is kind of starting to fight me. One of the things that you can do to prevent breakage is slowly work it back and forth till it starts getting tight, and then just work it back and forth. You're trying to smooth that balloon piece out to get it to where you can pull it up and out. You don't want to wrench on it because you will break that element off and have a world of issues. 
Maybe it'll be a four out of eight glow plug day. And that might be an entire possibility because this bad girl is tight. Is it? Yeah. Yee. I've been working on it here for a little bit. And it doesn't seem to be getting any better. Dry. Like my humor. I've stopped on this one here on the number two cylinder. I went to the one the next stitch back. I'm letting this one kind of sit with some tension on it. But this one, as soon as I got it pop free, she's starting to come out. So, there is hope, Kevin. We could have at least one. Well, yay! One's better than zero. I think that's success. Let me see if I can get my socket out. Ta-da! How they look? That's a lot of carbon, and that one actually is really weird. Someone has changed these. I cannot tell you what brand they are. They do look to be of a quality brand, so I don't think someone put cheap ones in. Would you like to bench test it? I would like to bench test it. Do we need a battery? We oh can no, get a... I set it. You load of this guy. Got the crap glow plug I just pulled out. Got the brand new hotness that we're getting ready to put in. One thing I can tell already is there are two different brands of glow plugs in this thing. You've got a <laughs> no name that was made in Baru. That, I see these all the time. That's an auto light. And that's a good old fashioned auto light. I've looked at the tech specs on these. They have a heat up cycle of about 10 seconds. So the way I test them at the shop, I typically just take my test leads here, put one side to a negative terminal. Nope. Put one side to the positive terminal. And then I take the body of the glow plug and put it up. And would you look at that? That one's good. Surprising. You had one. I mean, it cycled fine. Like, hmm. I bet they're probably not bad. I bet it's honestly a fuel issue. I bet you're right. But I still want to get a few of them out and put some yeah. oil down those cylinders. Yeah, for sure. You want to lick it? Is that one sticking a bit? A little bit. Yeah. But hopefully, I can get you guys an example of a balloon glow plug. It may also just be carboned up. We'll not know until we get it out. It's good, right? It is actually really, really hard to see. But on the side of that, it is very faintly ballooned out. Some of that may be carbon buildup, but when the elements go bad in these, they tend to expand. And I think this one has done just that. Okay, so I'm under the truck trying to figure out why our mechanical fuel pump was never working. I know these tank switch units love to fail, and I have played with the switch. One of our tanks shows half a tank and the other one shows infinity and that's because there's only one tank now this guy's this guy's gone as you can see there's the there's the hoses right there and those guys run straight across to this line and in but there's this line back here as you can see it's only half there this bugger and this guy runs this bottom port here you can see it moving a bit and I believe that is the feed to this tank. It's just completely obliterated by rust and gone. Which is why our mechanical fuel pump's not working. It probably still works fine. It's just not getting any fuel. So, what I'm going to try to do is tee in somewhere with our, um, some form of a tank sitting on the ground with a line and just eliminate this gas tank and see if we can get that mechanical pump up and running. So if you guys remember Kevin here on the last video, he had mentioned that I had told him to remove this line. Well, he's obviously put it back on. I'm not following my advice. The reason I had him take it off is it's kind of an air bleed or it's an, a catch point for air when these lines, return lines in these injectors start leaking. And what it'll do is it'll return air up into this housing and it'll airlock your pump. And you'll have issues like Kevin's had. It's not a good time. But fear not, there is still a return to tank. There is a path back to tank that runs down the back of the engine, down the frame rail, like a normal engine. 
So once we get to the working on this thing again, I'm gonna take and pull this line off, plug it here, cap it here, maybe just cut it and put a bolt here and a bolt here. And we'll go for the day. So going back to this first glow plug I started pulling out that I was having issues with, I let it sit with some tension on it. If it's got carbon buildup, maybe it'd crack and break away. If it was ballooned, maybe it'd stay or maybe it'd start flattening it out. I went back and twisted on it just a little bit harder, more than I probably should have, but I got it to start coming free. So I think we should have all the glow plugs on the driver's side out. Or I just broke the tip off and I'm really sad. She's coming. Hey, moment of truth. Ta-da! Looking at it, that is just packed full of carbon. So, realistically, the way the last few of these glow plugs have tested, he may have had a good working set of glow plugs. But I wanna pour some oil down these cylinders so these little guys are gonna to have to come out anyways. I still got the line open up front. I'm gonna put some power to this, throw some fuel at this system. Hoping this is a feed line. It could be a return line, I realize, but we'll get to that when we get to that. Oh, I hear noises. Up there. I hear noises. Oh! You got fuel? I got fuel. Sweet. Okay, we can utilize our original system. I'm going to hook that back up. And then hopefully our mechanical pump starts working too, and we could just like know that everything's good. So you can tell a lot about the health of a diesel engine. I wouldn't say a lot, but you can tell a good bit about the insides of a diesel engine just by pulling the glow plugs and looking at them. If you notice, this one, in comparison to this one, this one's a lot more oily. Could be a few contributing factors to that. Could be blow-by gases going through the intake. Could just be the way the runners run and crankcase vent gases going into that runner specifically. Could have a leaking valve seal, exhaust seal, or what have you. Or he could have had an injector that was constantly spraying on it, but it was never firing. If you look at these three, they're all carboned up. Look like just used glow plugs to me. So I could test them, but I've got new ones here. I know that are good. Come with a great warranty. I'd have to drive like six hours to get you new ones, but. <laughs> Brand new inbox. We'll put them in after we pour some oil down the cylinders and hopefully he gets done fiddling around with the fuel system. Wyatt came up with a great idea earlier, and I like it. I think we should execute upon it. Let's say out of the next 25, 50 people to buy a shirt from junkyarddigs.com, if you want one of those sexy things, the shirt, not Wyatt, head over to junkyarddigs.com, buy a shirt, and out of the next 50 orders at random, we'll throw in a glow plug. People that didn't know about that are gonna be like, what the, why is this shit in here? <laughs> Waiting. Oh, oh. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, air coming out. Oh, I got a lot of air. Oh. Okay, you could probably kill that. Good? Yep. I heard, uh, I heard fluid returning to the tank. I heard something aboard floor with bubbles. So what we can do is, if this starts working, so we're not just pumping all our fuel into the tank, we can just get a piece of soft line over that rusted out stuff and maybe use the tank. That's a good possibility. Or suck it dry again and hit your life. Yeah, yeah. What we can do to blow some of the shit out of the way, old fashioned way, is before I put any oil down the cylinders, we can put the batteries in and just. Yeah, that'll, that'll seal. That'll definitely seal. That'll keep uh, all the poop flying out of the engine from going straight back into the engine. So there is so much crap around these glow plug wells and whatnot. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna crank the engine over. Actually, I might have the, the host of the show here crank it over. I'm taking his thunder. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just here, actually, anymore. It's kinda nice. So we'll uh, whip it over, blow some of the crap out of the way. I've got the key on, so that way, pump Ooh. here. It's powered. So the pump here, it'll be pumping fuel, and if we start getting fuel while he's cranking it, we'll see little spurts of almost like grayish white smoke coming up. And that's a sign that we've got fuel to the cylinders. Should go real fast now that there's no uh, no glow plugs in there. As long as it didn't melt together after the fiasco there the other day. 
you are probably going to stand over here because things are going to get spicy. A lot of you guys said that you noticed the turbo is not spinning. It does spin. It's just old and been sitting forever. So it'll spin when the air starts actually moving. That is way louder and more violent than I was anticipating. Ready? Hold on. I'm going to go grab a wrench and I'm going to pop a few of these. I see we got fuel on too, question mark? Cool. Oh, we should probably turn the fuel on. Fuel is, oh, well, yeah. 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 Yep. Well, it's looking a lot better than it did before. Smell that? Diesel. That's power, baby. That was spraying a lot more diesel than it was last time when we, uh, before we have this this rendition of our fuel system set up. I can obviously see little spackles of stuff. So I think I think our main problem last time was fuel supply being non-existent and with all the ether we just ran all the oil out of the cylinders and there was no compression left. I mean we can try. I mean we can try it. I mean it's entirely up to you here. It's not my truck. It may go with me putting those new glow plugs in and the way it's sitting now, it may pop right off. I mean, we got them out, we might as well throw some oil down there if it's not too big of a pain. Yeah. It'll only help. Let's do it. Let's go. What the f is that? I just opened this thing of oil that's been sitting in the back of Kevin's truck. It for was funny because you were even like, ooh, Havoline. Look at you, all fancy. And then... Potato. This came out. I mean, I wasn't going to say like, the brand, but... It looks like fat. That reminds me, some guy said uh, in the comments, he's like... Don't get Casey's gas or this other place's gas because it's got just animal fat in it. Is that, is that a thing? Yeah. Or diesel, I guess. Yeah. It's a thing. There's some fuel stations in the area that run biodiesel, which is predominantly animal fat, soybean oil, and all that kind of stuff. That's what that reminded me yeah, of. That's which is up. exactly what it would look like in a, like a coagulated form. Um, I deal with it. I wouldn't say I deal with this a lot, but in the older fuel systems, like this truck is running with a mechanical fuel pump. Uh, in 1994, they were running a higher sulfur content in the fuel, which added as like a lubricity. Think lead uh, in gasoline in the 70s. It kept things lubricated in a weird way. Um, that's what sulfur did in mechanical fuel pumps and injectors on these trucks. Now, with the advent of EGR, DPF, SCR systems, and with the EPA stepping in on things, the fuel standards had been cut to where sulfur is almost completely out of the fuel. And if you go to like a gas station, look at your diesel fuel pumps, it'll say ultra low sulfur. I have seen that. It, yeah, I mean. I know these words. I know some of these words. Exactly. Running biodiesel can be a quote unquote bad thing, but you only run into issues with that in colder climates like Iowa in the winter. I run into it a lot where these guys don't treat their fuel properly or they bought pre-treated fuel, which hasn't been mixed properly, the fat content tends to uh, crystallize in the fuel quicker in the colder months. And then it looks like this chunk it of oil. looks like what we just did. I'm not a big fan of running high biodiesel content like B90 or whatnot that you see at pumps. I'm not a big fan of running it in the older fuel systems, but you look at all the YouTube videos of these guys taking fryer oil from Burger King, McDonald's and whatnot and making biodiesel and running them in these old IDIs, 12 valves, any old mechanical fuel system, they'll take it. They might get gummy and whatnot if you let them sit, but they'll take it. That's what she said? No. What? There's a joke in there somewhere. <laughs> oh, let's move our, move our diesel can. Don't, don't need this cab corner anymore. Just get rid of that guy. Oh, the only thing holding all this rust together was like the, the sealant they used to you know prevent this rust. Which actually I think just caused it, so. Yeah. See, rust like it's a bad thing. Call that Iowa gold. Oh my goodness. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> look at this. It's stretchy rust. <laughs> that is more impressive. That is, I've never seen the, this. Oh, bad. that's the sound deadening stuff that they put in from yeah, the factory. It's all like the goo. Rusty, look at it. Flexible, gooey rust. Nice. It's like a potato chip. Yeah, you want a piece? Yep. You got low iron content? Oh, that was a terrible idea. <laughs> what? Hey. All my knowledge leaked out. Look at it, like, 
landed perfect on the end of the, it looks like the extension of the pump. <laughs> These are my nipples. <laughs> I'm missing a nipple. <laughs> Alright, so that's that, right? Do we need to turn it over and zing that oil out and get it moving around? I mean, we could zing it, but one thing I w would like to do... I brought a big long wrench, as long as I can get a socket to fit on the front of this. Just nice and slow. If only we had a dead battery. <laughs> well, looking at your video the other day, we almost had a dead starter. Thing's fine, man. I don't know what you're talking about. It's just good to go. Cross your fingers. We're not done yet. Yeah, that's true. All right, Wyatt's under there. Probably in a world of pain. And he's going to try to turn this over by hand. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Hey. Oh. Movement. How's she feel? Um, like a diesel. Big. Greasy. Heavy. Stupid. And makes me money. Do you want me to start an inter some internet flack? I, a diesel technician, prefer a 7.3 IDI over a first generation power stroke. Over the 7.3 power stroke? Yeah, over the... So out of, out of these two trucks, you prefer this one? Yes. You know what you're doing for sure. I've learned a lot. Well, with that, he just died. So, this has been Wyatt on Junkyard Digs. I hope you guys enjoyed him. Oh, he lived. We can hit her with the key a little bit more and. Okay. Be prepared for stuff everywhere. I'm curious. Crack this straighter valve while I'm trying. Does our mechanical pump work? Keep going. So I could put a section of line in there and we could potentially run off the tank. Yep. Maybe we want to fire it first and make sure we have fuel before we have a big old eight foot section of air again in the line. Yep. I like that idea. Good. Man, those are shiny. What you got there? Oh, those are brand new glow plugs. These are Bosch brand? Those are Bosch. You need to be careful not to touch the element or something. I'm going to take those a no. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's not ideal, but... It's also a completely clapped out, rusted tow truck. I'm also going to say the oils on your hands and whatnot are nothing in comparison because you're going to have diesel fuel literally splashing on that right there. So, got all eight new glow plugs put in, torqued to a quarter turn before they break. So, <laughs> that's the specification we're going with. So, you pay for experience when you hire people like this, they know where the break point is. Exactly. If you haven't noticed by now, Wyatt is quite the knowledgeable fellow, so I decided to see if he could answer some questions I've always had about diesels. What I wasn't prepared for was the barrage of science he was about to give me. So, like, one of the diesels we did, it was covered in, like, a nest on yes. that 65 truck, and everyone's like, no, oh, it won't catch on fire. That's why farmers run diesels that won't catch fields on fire. Yeah, like, that is part of it. What, is it a lower exhaust temp? They do run a lower exhaust temp as long as you're not getting carried away with your timing and your fuel. Uh, into the cylinders um, just like any internal combustion engine if you put too much time or too much fuel to it and you run a higher EGT temp and yeah, diesels are more prone to it because they are what is called a lean burn system because there's no throttle valve on the intake manifold it's, it blows my mind that you can just regulate RPM based off of literally just fuel like more fuel is go faster you can only spin as fast as the fuel you have will allow you. They knock all the time too, right? Um, like diesel knock, aren't they just like pretty much always detonating and exploding? The old ones, yes. Like this style, yes. How does that survive? Because in a gas, your piston melts and you, you blow up and die. I, I guess I wouldn't call it knocking. The, the knocking you are hearing is the injection event because you've got roughly, I think on these, if I'm remembering correctly, I think the... Uh, seat pressure on these is like 1800 to 2000 psi so you're getting a minimum of that shot into a cylinder mm. that's compressing at around 300 to 350 psi so that a, clink 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 you hear is just so much pressure being made yep so much pressure being made in a short period of time and then idis as mentioned before in the video they are a flat top piston some of them specifically the factory turbo diesels have got very small reliefs in the tops of the pistons but for the all intents and purposes of the video for the most part they're a flat top piston with a flat cylinder head deck with a cup 
drilled into it and a small port that's probably no longer than yay wide by yay narrow. The really small port and it just shoots that flame front into the cylinders and then that's how you get your power strokes. Suck, squeeze, bang, boom. With extra squeeze. Extra squeeze. And then extra push squeeze too. Turbinsky. Yep. Yay. All right, so new glow plugs, different setup for our fuel system. Let it with the glow plugs out, get that compression out of the way so we can whip her over. Looks like we got a lot more fuel hitting the injectors this time. I think we're ready to go, right? I also um, redid one of the ends of these battery cables at one point. We've got everything cleaned up, make sure we got a maximum amperage. Um, that, that, that's it. We go hit the buttons. Yep, go hit the buttons and see what happens. Okay. When it comes off, I'll, uh, I'll crank on it. I'll be in here to shut it off in case things die. Do I need to do any gas pedal stuff? Or you want to I can do the gas pedal stuff. Just make sure she's in park so I don't get ran over. You're good. Okay, key on. Key on. All right. The glow plug relay is holding. Not exactly a fan of how short it was, but we'll see. That, my friends, is how you get a diesel dollar. First try. Huge madman. We think, honestly, it was the fuel system was an issue the whole time before. Son of a bitch. <laughs> I think the biggest differences we made was getting that oil in the cylinder, get that compression back up, and we changed our fuel system entirely. I think we were we were airlocking that feed line like hell last time. So I have no doubt. Going from the video I watched before I came up, I agree you were dealing with an airlock. Just watching the exhaust, you were seeing like a grayish puff, a white puff, a gray puff, a white puff. Yep. Some of that may have may not have been the old uh, Cosby in a can. Yeah. But we got a bit of a fuel leak over here. It's probably still just the return lines, but damn, she runs. And it actually doesn't sound that bad. It seems to have survived the um, ether torment it went through last episode. There is actually a lot of fuel coming out of those return lines. It's I bet. Oh, the pressure's still on. Yeah, but it's just leaching. <laughs> hey, hey, that actually surprised me. What was that noise? Cold start advance. So when you kick the key on, when it's cold outside or the engine is cold, that little solenoid kicks out right there and it kicks it forward. Nine times out of 10 on every truck that I deal with that work, that doesn't work. So that working is actually very surprising to me. Oh, interesting. So yeah, let's put a six inch section of uh, soft line between those two hard lines right there and see if we can make it run off the tank. Or airlock it and have to repeat the process all over again. Yeah. Trying to find a spot to snap this rusty line to where it's not gonna leak more. Heck. Ah! No, not diesel, please. What do you expect, my guy? Jello. All right, there we go. Let's try that. So we got our fuel line set in. Um, we did some electrical fixes on that hydraulic clutch. We're gonna see if that sucker works. But first, what we're concerned about is we probably got like three feet of air in the uh, tank line that's gonna be pumped up if it picks up fuel. So why it's gonna do whatever why it's gonna do to deal with that to keep that from hopefully air locking our fuel system, which now works. So hopefully I can do this without it locking. I'm about 50% certain I can, 50% certain I can't. We'll roll the dice. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Not getting any more fuel. 
I bet the um, I bet those lines are junk. I'm betting they're either plug full of shit. We've got a air leak somewhere. It's sucking air. I figured I would stop it now. So there's still some fuel up here. Yeah. So our fuel lines for this tank were completely obliterated and pretty much gone, and we we're getting air in the system, and it wasn't trying to run off of it. The other tank is completely missing because it rusted and fell off. However, the lines were still there and they still look pretty good. Someone might have replaced them at some point. So we took those lines and hooked them to this tank and we're about to bleed all the air out of the system with this electric pump and then hook the tank up the rest of the way. Ready, sir? I am. There it comes. Sounds like there's... There's all the air in the tank. Sounds like about an air leak somewhere too. I don't see any fuel dripping anywhere. Do you need more? Or is that good? Um, that should be good here. Um, do you want to go up front and hold that Schrader valve? Yeah. Fuel, good. All right, that looks good. All right, I'm gonna turn the scissors on. Okay. Power to the scissors. Scissors is active. Full plug for warming. Since we don't have any uh, oil pressure on the dash because it's a 90s Ford and nothing on the dash works, we're going to slide that oil sensor right there off from the turbo feed and see if oil actually comes out. It should. Oh, she's got oil. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> Does it build any pressure? I don't know. It was goopy and thick, but it's moving, so it's fine. It's highly possible you could have a bad sensor. Uh, I think they fail all the time. I don't. I think I own like two cars that actually ever had good ones. Uh, so with that, we know we're safe to let it sit here and idle because it's got coolant and oil pressure. So we can start playing around with hydraulics and see if anything works. Think of the fun stuff. So before it's running, it's like pegged out past low, and then you fire it up and like. Shoots to below low. So That's sense it's a sensor for you.
Okay, that's that's pretty pretty cool. And there it is! <laughs> what? We shot a wasp nest after you lost! That's awesome! Screw you wasps! We win! So the big question I have, does the air conditioning work? I really, really doubt it, but... I'm wagering on no looking at the rest of this truck. This will be $3,000 more for this truck if this works. the truck, but it would, it would have been cooler if it was the best. It's like we were revving the piss out of it, but it's just idling. This ought to take... Does this... Does this take the cake on Slave Lake? Is this worse? Ooh, that's a bold statement. Peg, we need your input. I can't... I can't word for that because I haven't witnessed the greatness that is Slave Lake in person. Yeah, I've never seen it in person, but does that thing blow by or does that thing just smoke? I think it just smokes, right? Well, it runs on, as he quotes, a radioactive horse piss. <laughs> so, there may be some contributing factors on that aspect, too. <laughs> I think Slave may have you there. Probably. Oh. Peg, do you want another? You can tow him around. Come get her. Bring a big ass trailer. Let me know. So let's uh, fire it up, put it in gear, and see what happens. system the whole time. I don't know what you're talking about three weeks. It was like a couple hours for me, man. Well, before we head out, we're going to check to make sure we got all our tools, which is really easy with Tang's foam inlay system. Because I can be like, I don't see any holes. Everything is here. Mint. All right, let's go get an air compressor and put some air in these tires and hopefully make it home without dying. It's like the fourth time I've aired up these tires. Every time we come here, they're flat. And I gotta start over. So Kevin hit me with the, uh, we gotta get this thing back to the shop. Do you wanna drive? Cause you're the diesel guy and you know things about diesels. Well, if I knew anything about a diesel. That chicken, it's not a happy chicken. I drove the last one and I was like, this thing's the biggest pile of junk. Runs okay, drives terrible. Let's let someone else drive this time. So, we'll, uh, it's only fair, you know, sharing is caring. Sharing is caring. Well, I'll get the key for you. Hang on, I just found a leg. That's a thing. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Something 
was a foot. Ah. Okay, closing the hood on that part of my life. Ain't got no license registration. Ain't got no proof of insurance. Ain't got a dang thing. <laughs> <laughs> that was fucking, dude, they made your eyes big and everything. It was awesome. We're gonna wait for yield traffic. Uh, oh, what was that? Oh. Did we just break a shock mount? Oh, Jesus, this thing's terrifying as well. Oh, hey, there's another gear. <laughs> ah, other diesels. This thing rides terrible. I have like little to no steering input. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Dude! We might we might have beat Slave Lake. You still got a trans? Well, I'm betting with our uh, speedometer <laughs> not working, and I'm betting the TPS is all out of whack. It's getting smoky in here. The chaser vehicle moved over. Why is it smoking out both sides? It's smoking in here too. Are we on fire? Hope not. I see ye old uh Oh rustic. god! Dump 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 dump. Flat spots in the everything. That shift. I was terrified of that shift. The U-joints on this thing. Oh that's gone. right, there's no U-joint. None! <laughs> Why is it so smoky in here? <laughs> it drives better than the other one, unfortunately. But the other one was like shaking. This one just does this a bunch as the frame warps. Kevin, you're in the passenger seat. I'm okay, yeah, that's true. How's it, how is it over there? It's terrifying. <laughs> we'll let her cool down and think about what she's done before we do anything more fun. <sighs> Survival. Survival. The cab literally moved when you did that. Oh my god! It's like I was on a roller coaster. <laughs> my seat was flying around. That's fine. being said we're going to end this episode thank you guys very much for watching thank you wyatt for all the help not a problem save my butt on this one <laughs> might have to call him next time we have a diesel too
If you liked what you saw here and you want to see content similar, check out all my friends, Thunderhead 289, Junkyard Mook, Dylan McCool, Classic Mustangs 429, DeBoss Garage, Vice Grip Garage, Cars and Cameras. Those guys have a bunch of awesome stuff you can check out on their channels. There's links down in the description. I will see you guys next time on Junkyard Digs. Peace.